Why don't you get up and tell the Lord you want to be another Elijah? To send the fire down once again. That the power of the Holy Ghost will fall on you tonight. You want to be another Elijah. Get up, get up, get up and tell the Lord. Let it happen tonight. Let it happen tonight. Let it happen tonight. Let it happen tonight. Volunteer to be another Elijah. In Jesus' name we pray. Almighty God, we come before you tonight. We thank you for this great privilege that you can give the key, the power, the authority to everyone here. Lord, we volunteer that we want to be like us for God in Jesus' name. We pray, oh Lord, these evening sessions, you bring your power, your fire, your authority, the keys of the kingdom in the hands of everyone in Jesus' name. We pray that nobody here will miss your power, will miss the fire of heaven. That Lord, by the authority you give, by the key that you give, you'll make Elijah's out of us in Jesus' name. Confirm your word, O oh Lord. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And everybody said a good amen. God bless every one of you. Please be seated. In our evening sessions, we're going to be talking about the ministry of Elijah. And then we're going to end up with Elisha. As you look at the program, you'll see we talk first of all about the minister, the man Elijah. And then we talk about the ministry and the mission of Elijah. And then the, the message and the miracles that came through Elijah. And then on the final night, as the Lord will give us chance, on a final night, as the Lord will give us liberty. On a final night, as the Lord will give you opportunity. The mantle of Elijah. Everybody say the mantle of Elijah. If you if you get it, mantle. If you get it, mantle. The mantle of Elijah. I'll explain to you what that means when we get there. I'm telling you, when you go back to your state, to your region, to your district, to your locality, and, and, you, and you go away with that power, with that authority, with that key, with that mantle of Elijah, where you were running away before, you get there like this, people will run away for you. There will be mighty conversions. There will be wonderful revival. And revival is going to break out on a very large, explosive way in Jesus' name. Hey, tonight is the introduction. I'm talking to you on the minister, the man, Elijah. What a man, Elijah. He came without introduction. What a man, Elijah. He didn't even give us the name of the father or the name of the, of the, of the mother. He didn't even give us any detail about him. He just came. And you know his name, Elijah. It means, my God is Jehovah. Jehovah is my God. And you may not know the significance of that name. From the time of Solomon, because he didn't live right, God said he was going to divide the kingdom. And when his son took over, the kingdom was divided. And ten tribes went to Rehoboam. Or Jeroboam. And then two tribes got to the son of Solomon. And from one to the other, 
and one to the other and one to the other. They were doing evil. And it came to the servant's king, Ahab. And he did more evil than everybody else. And he made Baal worship the state religion, the nation, or the, the religion of the people of God. Fifty-eight years had passed between the death of Solomon and this time, and all these evil kings had been ruling. And then all of a sudden, Elijah appeared. And everybody feared. There were 7,000 men that had never kneeled down to idols, to Baal, but they were hiding. Nobody knew where they were. And the other prophets that were still alive, or Badiah hid them, nobody was wanting to show his face. Corruption was there. Idolatry was there. Occultism was there. False worship was there. Every negative thing was there. And the priesthood had been corrupted. All of a sudden, here comes one man. How I pray that in your community, in your state, in your region, in your nation where you come from, in your locality, in your district, when everything is down and sin is ruling and reigning, that God's hand will be on you. And that you will be that Elijah for this hour. It can happen. I said it can happen. And look at this in chapter 17 of 1 Kings, verse 1. And Elijah, the Tishmite, who was of the inhabitant of Gilead, said unto Ahab, as the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. Ha, that's a man. That's a minister. That's fire. Somebody that could confront Ahab. Don't you know Ahab? Don't you know Jezebel? And when you combine Ahab and Jezebel, don't you know the evil? Don't you know the authority they had? Don't you know what Obadiah told Elijah later? When he said, go and tell your master that I am here. And today, I'm going to see his face. And he said, what have I done? That you want me to be killed? Because everywhere, Ahab had been searching for you. And he'll take an oath from them. And if they say that they didn't see you, they have to swear. And if I go tell him now that I found you, and then you escape by the Spirit of the Lord catching you away, he will kill me. And that's, and that's the kind of a person that Ahab was. And of course, Jezebel, you know that woman. The power, evil power, behind the husband Ahab. And those two, they could do anything in the land. And yet here this man appeared, Elijah. My God is Jehovah. Because you see the whole nation, they said God is no more Jehovah, but God is Baal, idols. And then he came, he said, as the Lord God of Israel, you think he's dead as he liveth. You think he has ceased to be as he liveth. You think he's not functioning anymore as he liveth. You think he's abandoned Israel as he liveth. You think he doesn't have anything to do in the affairs of man anymore as he liveth. And then he said, before whom I stand. You understand that language? That's exactly the language of angel Gabriel when he came to Zechariah in the New Testament. And the angel Gabriel said he had been sent by the Lord and before whom he stood. And see this man Elijah using exactly the same language as an angel. The Lord God of Israel who still lives before whom I stand. And then he declared something. Ahab never heard this. 
for a man to have so much authority, authority on earth, authority in heaven, to say, and, and you know, he wasn't saying it in, in a doubtful way, apologetic manner, as if, let me be careful now, because, you know, if it doesn't happen eventually, what will become of me? He said, according to my word, take it. There shall not be dew, there shall not be rain, all these years. And this is really an historical figure. Well, we know it's a historical figure because Jesus Christ referred to him. In Luke chapter 4, Luke chapter 4, reading from verse 25, Luke 4, 25. But I tell you of the truth, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias, that means Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, when great famine was throughout all the land, Jesus confirmed that there was a man like Elijah. Jesus confirmed what he announced, that according to my word, there will be no rain, there will be no dew, all these years. Not only that Jesus confirmed it in James chapter 5. James chapter 5. Verse 17, Elias, Elijah, was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And then in verse 18, and he prayed again. Uh, rain couldn't come until he prayed again. The nation couldn't have dew or rain until he prayed again. He was not a politician, but he had more power than Ahab on the throne ruling the nation. He wasn't a politician. He wasn't in the Senate. He wasn't in the Assembly. He wasn't a decision maker in the political realm. But the key was in his hand. And by the key of prayer and the power of the Holy Ghost in his life and the authority the Lord had given him as a prophet, he was able to change things. How I pray that the church will wake up. That if the church became what the church ought to be, all the things happening in any country, we can use the key. After all, didn't Jesus say, whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven? Didn't Jesus say, I give you the keys of the kingdom? And whatever you lose on earth is loosed in heaven. Didn't Jesus say, if two of you shall agree together as touching anything, and you ask my father, I will give you. Why is the church saying we're not involved? You see corruption in your country, and you don't do anything about it. You see poverty in your country, you can't do anything about it. You see false religion taking the lead in your country, you can't do anything about it. You see occultism, kidnapping in your country, you can't do anything about it. And you see in your community, all these people that are using charms, that they even take laws into their hands. And if they suspect that anybody is a criminal, they use their charms and they use their matches and they use everything, just kill people and, and, and put them on the street. And you see that as a Christian? And you see that you are in the same situation as the Israelites were, and one man rose up, count us here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 20, 30, 100, 1,000, 2,000, 7,000, 10,000. Ah. If the power, if the spirit, if the authority, if that same key could be in your hand, and you go to all these other places, well, the politicians, they know they cannot control things anymore. The assembly, can they control things anymore? Higher institution, can they control things anymore? Things are just going uphand. How I pray that in this Congress, God will raise up Elijah's. God will raise up Elisha's. And we will turn things around in Jesus' name. 
And we're not talking about, you know, all these people. And these people, I even wonder, these religious people, at the end of the year, they begin to make some, you know, prophecies. Watch them. That's how they did the previous year and the previous year and the previous year. And they said, you know, this new year, God said, this will happen, this will happen. Everything is fine. Now there's prosperity. There's going to be, you know, peace and everything will be all right. Oh, they don't have the spirit of Elijah. And the things they say, don't you watch the things they say? They say, you know, there will be no death and there will be no harassment and, you know, prices are going to go down. And they just say some sweet, sweet, sweet things. And, and the members of their churches in their watch night service will be clapping. Will be, they will be rejoicing. You know, Papa said, Pastor said, Evangelist said, Prophet said, everything is okay. And we're back to square one even from January. We're looking for real prophets of God. And I'm praying that God will lay his hand on you. He must. We need something in this country. We need something in every country in Africa. If God can raise up Elijah, if God can raise up Elisha, and we distribute ourselves in every community in this African continent, because we look to the West, what are they doing? And we look to, you know, they, they send armies, they send peacekeepers, you know, they say in Burundi we will not kill ourselves anymore, in Rwanda we will not kill ourselves anymore, in Namibia we will not kill ourselves anymore, uh, and they send all these, and with all those things, we're still killing ourselves. We need Elijah, we need Elijah, we need Elijah, and I pray that during this conference, that spirit of Elijah, that power of Elijah, that authority of Elijah will fall upon you in Jesus' name. And you know, Elisha, 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 but this time we're talking now, this time we're talking now, Elisha was still in the field. He wasn't even a full-time worker. He was still doing, and a double portion was waiting for him. Maybe you are there like Elisha, as I'm talking tonight, and I'm talking about full-time Elijah. I'm talking about the key in the hand of full-time Elijah. I'm talking about this, Elijah, and you're still there on the field like Elisha. You are not on full time. You are just plowing your field. You are doing your management. You are your director somewhere. I'm telling you, God is looking at you. And the power is going to come upon you. And all that yoke of oxen, you are going to leave it aside. And that double portion is going to come upon your life. And then, when the double portion comes, and we distribute ourselves everywhere, I'm telling you, the key to rectify things, to put things right, that key is in your hand. What politicians cannot do, you will do. What the decision makers cannot do, you will do. And what all the policy makers cannot do by the power of the Holy Ghost coming upon your life and the fire coming in your ministry, you will do it in Jesus' name. There are three points I'm going to talk about. Number one, the call and the commission of the man Elijah. The call and the commission of the man Elijah. And then number two, the courage and the conviction of the minister Elijah. Then number three, the commitment and the confidence in the ministry of Elijah. The commitment, the confidence in the ministry of Elijah. Number one, the call. And the commission of the man Elijah. Uh, you look at uh, that First Kings, chapter seventeen again. First Kings, chapter seventeen, reading there from verse one. And Elijah the Tishmite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, do you know he's still alive? I said, Do you know he's still alive? Is see alive in your soul? Is see alive in your spirit? Is see alive in your heart? Do you experience him? Does he touch your life? Does he move you? Does he stir you up? Do you know, apart from reading the Bible, do you know from experience? Do you know from the spirit bearing witness in your own heart that God, the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob is still alive today? This man, he was sure, although everybody doubted, and it appeared nobody in Israel was willing to come out and declare and remind us that the God of Israel is still alive. He said, before whom I stand, I fellowship with him. I know him. 
I hear his word. And he speaks to me. And I speak to him. And actually, he and I, the God of Israel and I, we decide what's going to happen to Israel. Ahab is just there. Jezebel is just there. All those others, you, you know the people that Ahab put in his cabinet? The false prophets. The prophets of Baal. All those people there, they are just there. But I'm telling you, Elijah said, it's God and I that take decisions. And so the next three and a half years, we have taken decisions what will happen. And then he told Ahab, he said, here, this is the decision we are taking because I'm coming from the very presence of God. And he said, before whom I stand, there shall not be. Do you not reign these years according to my word? And, and that man, after saying that, then he went away with the key. Ahab, why don't you grab this man? Lock him up. He said, I don't know why. When this man appeared, I was so paralyzed. I was so weak. I couldn't even do anything. And as he announced, normally what I would have done in my normal senses, in my planning, is I would have, I would have told my bodyguard to, to catch this man and imprison him and, you know, get rid of him. And when he appeared, all of us we were beating hands down. We were just weak and <laughs> paralyzed. I'm telling you, the power of Elijah will come upon you. And when you go to make your proclamation, your announcement, all those people that, that, that have been threatening, if you dare come to this side, we will deal with you, you will deal with them. Yeah. And when you make your announcement and proclamation, they'll be beating hands down. When the call of God is upon a man, when God commissions a man as to what he is going to do, you cannot lay hand on that man. Because while he's in ministry, and while he's fulfilling the call, and he's standing before the Almighty God, and he's doing exactly what the Almighty God has told him to do, there is no Ahab, there is no Herod, there is no Pharaoh, there is no Nebuchadnezzar, there is nobody anywhere that can stop the ministry of that man. And that's what I'm telling you tonight, that you are going to be a different person. The call, the call, the call, and the commission of this man, Elijah. I want you to look at Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5, I'm reading to you there from verse 4. Hebrews 5, 4. Here it says, And no man taketh this honor unto himself, but he that is called of God. No man taketh this honor unto himself, but he that is called of God. How can a man just come before the king of a nation? A, a brutal king, a ruthless king, a wicked king, an idolatrous king, a magical king. How can a man come before a king like that and make such announcement and such proclamation and say, according to my word, there will be no rain, not something, and then there will be no deal at all? All these, not days, not months, years. That man was called of God. And no man can just take that honor to himself and just do something like that all alone by himself. This is a call of God. God still has a witness. No matter what darkness covers the land, no matter what immorality covers the land, and no matter what confusion covers the land, no matter how false religion is spreading anywhere, God still has his Elijah. He still has his Elisha. Maybe you are there, the Elijah of God, and you don't even know. And you don't even know, but you will discover it this week. Because you find the stirring in your heart. All of a sudden, you'll be feeling in your heart to rise up and say something. 
all of a sudden, you'll be feeling as if, let's finish the Congress in time. You'll be remembering something you ought to say. Word of authority and word of power. And, and, it's, and it's not a passing thing. The thing will be remaining in you, permanent in you, and then as you go back, the, the Spirit will stir you up again. The fire will burn again. Then you will open your mouth before you even knew you were opening your mouth. And you begin to say something, and it is something you, you will want. How could I say that? But you have said that before you even reasoned, and then the Lord will perform it. Because God has a witness everywhere. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 14, Acts chapter 14, verse 17, nevertheless, he left not himself without witness. Nevertheless, he left himself not without witness. As bad, as corrupt, as evil, as Israel was at that time, God still has a witness. And we know, we know, we know, by God bringing you here and preparing this message for you in particular is because God has chosen you to be a witness where you came from. And you will be a witness. I said you will be a witness. Uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the Lord is really glorifying himself. And you can tell how the Lord is glorifying himself. I was talking to one of our overseers from a country, West African country, today. And I said, how was your retreat? Oh, he said, it's difficult to describe it. I said, tell me a little. And then he started telling me and he said that, you know, this woman had the tummy very big as if she was pregnant and then you know a nurse a member of the church looked at her and examined her and said this is not pregnancy this is another thing big as if she was going to deliver the following week i'm, I'm telling you very very big and the, the very first night the very first night praying to prevail and when she came, when she came to that retreat during the day, she was rolling in pain. It was too much. But that very first night, praying to prevail. After that prayer, she felt like going to the toilet. And she went to the toilet and big fibroid come, came out. And, and, and she took that fibroid and then called the sisters and said, see, and called... And he's, he was and is still the wife of a coordinator in that place. And the thing came out like that. If by listening to the cassette, ordinarily, not face to face, that could happen. Ah, you are more than cassette. I said you are more than cassette. If the power of the almighty God can go with a cassette, that cassette originated here. And then we send that cassette out. And even that cassette we sent out, after we recorded, after we recorded it, we don't know who handled it in the post office. Unbelievers. They touched it. They handled it. And the power was still there. You, more than a cassette, an unbeliever will not touch you. And we are not posting you somewhere. You are going to go there by yourself. And power will go with you. Authority will go with you. Because the call of God and the commission of the Lord is upon your life. And then he told me other stories. I said, that's enough. Let me see another person. And I saw another person. And I, and I said, you know, he is, uh, you know, he, was, uh, he is from French-speaking country. And so we started talking in our language, French. And I said, tell me. I won't tell you because you won't understand. So I, I, we started speaking our French. And I said, tell me. And he began to tell me, and he said, Pastor, we never saw anything like this before. I said, tell me, what didn't you see before? He said, this woman had a visible kind of growth on the hand, at the back of the hand, like this, very big, conspicuous, that everybody knew. And then, when that message came, prevailing, I, I'm sure you will prevail. The devil has no choice. All this rope that he tied on you, all the limitation that was on you before, everything is caught in Jesus' name. As that message came out, well, the power of the Holy Ghost in a cassette, in a cassette, in a cassette. 
and the people of preaching the case. I don't know who they are. I don't know whether they are all, you know, baptized in the Holy Ghost. The, 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 the machine they were using, I don't think they prayed on the machine. The case there. As the message came out, they closed their eyes. And while we were praying, and when we said, in Jesus' name, and the woman opened her eyes, this big thing that had been on her hand for many, many years, she opened her eyes, she cannot see it again. That's why I have the conviction that if the power of God can go with a cassette and then do something like that, and I know you, you are more than a cassette, and I know what's going to happen. The power of God will fill you here. The spirit of the living God will fill you here. And there you will go. You will do exploits for the Lord in Jesus' name. Called and commissioned in, in, um, in Jeremiah. Jeremiah, reading from chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1, reading verse 4. Then the watch of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet to the nations. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak. For I am a child. Maybe you are saying there as I'm telling you that you are going to be a fire branch. And you are saying, not me, but it is you. I cannot do it, but you will do it. I cannot talk, but you will talk. I'm always afraid of witches and wizards. Don't worry, they will be afraid of you. I've never prayed for the sick, but you will pray for the sick. I don't have the call of God, but you will have the call of God. I don't think I'm commissioned, but you are commissioned. I don't think I can succeed, but you have succeeded already. Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, says the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. The Lord will touch your mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, I have this day set thee over the nations. There are missionaries here. I don't mean our missionaries that came. You, you are still, you're still doing your normal business. You are still establishing your school. You are still doing this. You are still doing But you are a missionary. And the fire of the Lord will be burning in your heart. And you will not rest. You will not rest. Because the, the people there, it's you they are waiting for. God has set you over nations. And you will go to those nations. He said, I have set you, he said, over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down and to build and to plant. And you see the call of God right there? That call is upon your life. As we talk about Elijah, how do we know he was called and commissioned? Oh, it's proved, number one, God's confirmation. When a man speaks and God confirms it, that's a confirmation of the call. Number two, supernatural supply. As you read a story, and he went to the brook cherries, and you see how God supernaturally supplied his need. That's God's call confirmed. Christ's affirmation. In the New Testament, I read it to you how Jesus said that Elijah, that when he spoke, there was no rain. All those three and a half years, number four, angelic ministry. How God sent angels from heaven to come and give him food and to direct him as to what he ought to do. Number five, signs and wonders. Don't you see those miracles that happened in the ministry of Elijah? And don't you see how the dead was raised? 
Don't you see how he was able to, you know, talk to Ahab and there was nothing Ahab could do? That's confirmation. It, number six, national repentance. When he came to the people and he said, why do you stand between two opinions? If God be God, worship him, serve him. But if Baal, worship him. And the people could not answer a single word. Then he said, all right, this is what we are going to do. You have all these prophets of Baal. Let them take their sacrifice and let them cut it. Don't put fire there. And then let them pray to their God. And then if they do that, I will do that to you. The God that answers by fire. Let him be God. And eventually those people did all they wanted to do and nothing happened. And they said, come aside. And at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, they came near and he repaired the altar of the Lord. And then he laid the wood in order and he put the sacrifice there. And he told them to put barrels of water. And he did that in the trench they had dug. And then he said... Lord, at the time of the evening sacrifice, let these people know that you have called me and that you have sent me and that I'm speaking your words to them and turn their hearts back to you again. And the fire came and the people fell down. They said, the Lord is God. The Lord is God. National repentance. And now that confirms the call of the man. Number seven, continuing impact and influence. Continuing impact and influence. Before he left, he transferred that power to Elisha. And the ministry of Elijah continued through Elisha. That, that's why we know that man was called, number eight, glorious exit. How he left this world without tasting death. How the chariots of fire and the horses of fire came from heaven and took him away. All these will confirm, will tell us that God called the man. The call of God in your life will be confirmed by the many signs and wonders that will take place in Jesus' name. And many people will be turned to the Lord and there will be no doubt in our hearts when we see what God is doing through you. How people have been saved, how lives have been transformed, how believers have been sanctified, how they are becoming dynamic and they are becoming the power of God as the Holy Ghost comes upon them, how they are being healed, how they are being delivered. There will be no doubt in anybody's heart that God's call commission is upon your life. God raised up the most dynamic prophet in the reign of the most wicked king of Israel. He did it before, he will do it again. Point number two, the courage and the conviction of the minister Elijah. And we'll come back to this first kings again. First kings chapter 17 1 Kings chapter 17. I'm reading to you once again from verse 1. It says, And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. Here we find uh, this man of courage courage because uh, the condition of Israel was hopeless not only that Ahab and Jezebel were very wicked beyond description not only that false prophets were many and very influential not only that the nation was helpless under the burden of tyranny and idolatry and the remnant of the believers were so fearful quiet and passive and the, the remaining prophets of the Lord were hiding in caves. And Satan and demons watched on their streets without anyone to challenge them or to confront their evil. And then comes a man that takes courage, that takes conviction. And from the action of Elijah, from the declaration of Elijah, and from the things that we saw in his ministry and from the way he was able to confront the situation as well as the people we know that he was a man of courage and conviction and if you are going to have an effective ministry an influential ministry you will have to manifest that same courage and conviction by the way how could he be so courageous and so bold to say that there will be no rain 
there will be no deal all these years. Uh, there's a reason for that. That man, Elijah, was a man of the word. The word of God. In Deuteronomy chapter 11. Deuteronomy chapter 11. Reading in verse 16. Deuteronomy 11 verse 16. Take heed to yourselves. That your heart be not deceived. And ye turn aside and serve all the gods and worship them. That's exactly what the people of Israel, that's what they had done at the time of Ahab. God had said, be careful now, be careful, now, be very careful now. That your hearts be not deceived. That you do not turn aside and serve all the gods and worship them. And then the Lord's wrath will be kindled against you. And he shut up the heaven, that there be no rain, and that the land yield not her fruit, lest ye perish quickly from all the good land which the Lord giveth you. He was a man of the world. The Lord had said, if the people of Israel went back to worship idols or the gods, he will shut up the heavens. And there will be no rain. So all Elijah did is just to go to God and say, God, didn't you tell these people that if they worshipped idols, there will be no rain? They are worshipping idols. And rain is still falling. They won't take your word serious. They won't believe your word. They will think your word is a joke. Here it is. This is me 11, 16, and 17. Lord, do it. Suspend the rain. Suspend the deal. If you do that, they will not be able to toy with your watch anymore. And then God confirmed to Elijah and he said, Yes, your prayer is according to my word. Your demand is according to my word. I'm going to do that. And that's why I had the boldness and the courage to go to that man and to say, According to my word. Actually, the word of God has become his own word. There will be no rain. There will be no dew. All these years. Because they had gone away from the Lord. This man did everything according to the word of the Lord. Look at 1 Kings chapter 18. 1 Kings chapter 18. And I'm reading there in verse 36. 1 Kings 18, 36. And it came to pass... At the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of, of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel, and that I am thy servant, listen to this, and that I have done all these things are thy word, a man of the word. That word gives courage. When you know that you are standing on the unchanging, inspired, infallible word of God, that Satan cannot contradict. You'll have courage, you'll have boldness, you'll have conviction, because you know that you are with God. And you and God, you are in the majority. And no matter if all the demons out of hell, no matter if Lucifer, Satan, the diabolical one, if he comes in person, no matter if all the witches and all the wizards of the whole continent, if they came together, all of them combined together cannot contradict, cannot defeat, cannot destroy the word of the living God. In our last retreat here, I, I was preaching and I gave a testimony and I know that you know some of the people they might although I know they believe me and they know that by the grace of God I don't I don't say what I don't know if I give any testimony it means the thing is true I gave the testimony of uh, the wonderful conversion of a terrible big time long time woman herbalist that made a lot of money through that business and people came people came to her 
and, and she was, you know, they were living somewhere in the town. And she told us that whenever they have their meeting in the stage, apart from the patron and the matron, she was the next person. And none of the others, witches, wizards, abalists, whatever, none of the others could point finger at her or say anything to her. But they were looking for land, they were looking for house. And eventually the husband got land near the IBTC. And she said, never. I'll never go and build near church. I don't want those people to confront my power. So they lost the original land and house. They just, they gave it up. And then they looked for land. And secretly, the husband got house at the back of the IBTC kitchen behind the fence. And she said, no way. I will not go there with you. And they put pressure on her. Eventually she came. And she was living there. And big men will be coming from every, not only from Lagos, from different places. And they'll be coming to consult her. She'll be doing sacrifices. And, you know, if any man was misbehaving and, you know, not uh, being faithful to the wife, and the woman will come to her and say, see what my husband is doing and she will then tie that man the man will not be able to go to other and she was just making thousands 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 of naira and then one day we had retreat here power as of hold you know whenever we put all these titles and we say the retreat we're having this time it is the discovery of the power to conquer and to overcome we don't just give title we don't just copy what other churches are doing and when we said the retreat this time is power as of old. And then eventually, I gave the testimony when I was preaching. And then I sent for her because now she's born again. Now she's, you know, even a worker in the church. So I, I, I sent for her. And then during the break, I spoke to her. I said, I, I gave your testimony yesterday. Remind me of the testimony just to cross check. That what I said to the congregation is true. And she repeated the testimony. I said, you will come tonight and come and tell the people yourself. And she came. And if you, if you want to hear, buy the cassette. They, they reproduce it for you. When you listen to that thing, all the fear in your heart will vanish away. She stood here and said that anybody that knew her before. Because when she goes to the village... And she was doing sacrifice. All the women in the town, they'll be dancing after her. Follow her through. All running around and going around the perimeter of the whole village. She was a great woman in their area. And then I was preaching over here. And then the message will go right into her room. Then she will not be able to concentrate or do any other thing. She will leave the room and go to the parlor. The message will come there. And then she'll go to the children's room. The message will come there. And then, after he, it was disturbing her. I said, this is the reason I said we shouldn't come and take house in this place. And she said, when other people preached, that was okay for her. She felt at ease. She felt convenient. And she had never seen me. And any time I come over here and I begin, then he said, that man has come again. And never knew me. And eventually... I was preaching and I said, what will it profit you? If you gain the whole world, all the naira, you are getting everything and you lose your soul. That caught her eventually. She, all her idols, all the shrine, everything, she abandoned everything. And then everything was totally destroyed. Eventually she went to a Bible study near a district here and she was born again. But then there was shrine at home that she needed to destroy. And she came to Bagada wanting to see me. And because people were many, she couldn't see me. Eventually she came back home at the back of the kitchen here in her house. And in the night she saw me. And she saw two angels, one on my right and one on my left. And he said that those, they were like giants. And then I spoke to her in that dream, and I said, now you can go home, go and destroy that thing. When she woke up, she told the husband, I have seen the pastor. 
She went to the village, got all the shrine, destroyed everything. And all that time she had not met me directly. And every time she was confused, every time she wanted to take a decision, then she would see me again with those two angels. And she said, they are like white men beside me. And then we will minister to her and pray for her. And that's four times that happened. And eventually, one day, uh, you know, the women coordinator in that locality, you know, said, you have a chance to see the pastor. Wouldn't you like to see her? Ah, she said, let me go and see her. And then she came and told me the whole story. And then she said, I've been seeing you in my dreams with those two angels beside you. And anytime, every time I see you, something good always happens. And then she said, now that I see you face to face, I know that something great is going to happen. And she had, before she saw me directly, she had done operation, I think three times, goiter. And, you know, the thing was, you know, just failing. And then the last one that she did after she saw me, everything went out fine. And when I called her December to come and give testimony here, she said, Pastor, I'm so happy. Not only that I'm giving testimony because I see you again today because every time I see you, something always happens to me. And I'm telling you, if God is doing this with the people that don't even have the direct connection, the direct contact, if he's doing that through them and to them, you, you are my right hand man. You are my right hand sister. You are my representatives and the representative of Christ. Everywhere you go, I pass the power on to you. After this congress, anywhere you go, don't worry about your faith. Don't worry about your courage. Don't worry about anything. I pass it unto you in Jesus' name. You see, this man, Elijah, he had courage. And he had conviction. And when he stood, he stood as somebody that had stood in the presence of God. You have come here and you are standing in the presence of God. After you have come and you have stood in the presence of God, who can you be afraid of? I said, who can you be afraid of? The Lord is my salvation and my light. Of whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my strength. Whom shall I fear? When my enemies and my foes, when the wicked, when they come up to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and they fell. And don't wash your eyes against me, and don't hold your compass about me. In this will I be confident. One thing have I desired, and I've desired of the Lord, that I will be in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. And the last verse of that, Psalm 27, says that you wait on the Lord and be of good cheer. And then he says, he, he, he will perform, he will establish you. I say, wait on the Lord. You are waiting on the Lord already. After this conference, enemies that follow after you, they will stumble and fall. And your ministry, nobody will hinder or disturb your ministry anymore in Jesus' name. Point number three, the commitment and confidence in the ministry of Elijah. The, 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 the commitment and the confidence. Hey, look at this scene, 1 Kings chapter 17. 1 Kings chapter 17, I'm reading now from verse 2. The Lord, the watch of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook cherries, that is before Jordan, and it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook. And I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. God said, Elijah, there is famine in the city. There is famine everywhere. Come on here. I'm going to be your supply. You will never lack. You will never want. Wait for me over there at the brook Sherith. Drink out of that water. What are you going to eat? The ravens. I've commanded them. Miracle. Don't you know that ravens are ravenous? And they devour everything. They eat up everything. But I've commanded them, the food I'm sending to you, with those ravens, they will not touch that food. No covetous man will take your property. All that God is going to supply, all that God is going to give you, nobody will be able to divide it in Jesus' name. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. That's his commitment. His commitment to the Lord to obey the word of the Lord every time. And so 
he went and he dwelt by the brook cherries, that is, before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening. And he drank of the brook. You will not know about the famine. You will not know about the problem. And it came to pass, after a while, that the book dried up because there had not been any rain in the land. And Elijah, and Elijah waited there. The brook dried up, but he had not got a new message from the Lord. And he waited there. You wait there. You wait there. Anywhere the Lord sends you, anywhere the commission of the Lord takes you, you wait there. Don't be in a hurry. The Lord will come and meet you there. Uh, and uh, and there's not, don't you see the way the Lord fed this man? By divine supernatural supply, there is nothing the Lord cannot do. In Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 32, Jeremiah chapter 32, reading there from verse 27, Jeremiah 32, verse 27. You see, you see what the Lord is saying. In verse 27, it says, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything you had for me? Anything you had for the Lord? I said anything you had for the Lord. The Lord says he's going to bless you. And there is nothing impossible with God. I told, uh, you know, people over here at the watch night service, because we are here together. I told them, in this new year, cut off old language from your mouth. Language, I am weak. I don't have any faith. I cannot do much. I'm always unfortunate. God never answers my, cut it off, cut it off, cut it off. New language, new language. Let the weak say I am strong. You are strong. The spirit of the Lord is upon you. The Lord has given you a call. The Lord has commissioned you. His word in your mouth will not fail. You will go and meet whatever, whoever they are. Ahab, Jezebel, anybody, you will conquer them. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. The spirit of God is coming upon you tonight. As we stand up and as we pray, and we just say, Lord, I want to be another Elijah. In this generation, at this time, Lord, make me another Elijah. My sister there, pray. Let God do something new in your life. Something new in your ministry. My brother, let God do something new in your life. Something new in your ministry. With God, all things are possible. All things are possible. He will do it. He will do it. He cannot fail. Another Elijah. Another Elijah. Another Elijah. Another Elijah. Another Elijah. Receive the call of God. Receive that commission of the Lord. Receive that courage. Receive that conviction. Receive that commitment. And receive that confidence in the Lord. And go out and do what the Lord has called you to do. You cannot fail. You cannot fail. The Lord is on your side. The Lord is on your side. You will proclaim, you will declare it before Ahab. You'll beat them hands down. And there's nothing they can do against your life. You are victorious. You are victorious. You are victorious.
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. How many of you believe that God wants to do something through you? You. 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 Maybe you are not on full time. Maybe you are on full time. Maybe you are just a local pastor. Maybe you are just a district leader there. Maybe you are an overseer. Maybe you are on foreign mission. Maybe you are on home mission. Maybe you think you are young. And you think, what can I do? You think you are not well educated. You think you are not talented. You think you don't have any gifts. Nobody knows your family. You are not rich. You don't have a good personality. You don't even have self-confidence. You are very shy. You are very timid. And you are almost afraid of everything and everybody. God's hand is coming upon your life tonight. He will pick you up. He will make you a dynamite. You will do something significant. Just keep up your hand. Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you for all my brothers and all my sisters. I thank you for what we have studied and what we have learned and what we have had today. Oh Lord, I pray the power of the Holy Ghost will come upon them in Jesus' name. You promise them, you promise us, you promise your church. These signs shall follow them by belief. I pray, Lord, make real believers, dynamic believers, preaching believers, ministerial believers. Out of them, let your signs and your wonders follow after them in Jesus' name. All those who are claiming to be weak, in weakness, make them strong. Let all their weakness be blown away by the dynamite of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. All their inexperience, all their timidity, all their powerlessness, all their lethargy, all their lukewarmness, all their discouragement. I pray that the fire of the Holy Ghost will come upon their lives. And all those things will be burnt away in Jesus' name. And if there is anything in their own body, like sickness, like infirmity, that is always reminding them. You say you want to pray for the sick, how about you? You say you want to deliver the oppressed, how about this one on your body? You say you want to pray for those people to have children, how about your own family? You say you want to pray that God will supply all the needs of other people, how about your own need? Oh Lord, if there is any limitation, if there is any hindrance, if there is anything the devil is using, reminding them all the time, pinning them down all the time saying, if you say you are going to minister, how about this, how about this, all those things I command, get out of their lives in Jesus' name. Every plant the Heavenly Father has not planted in your life. Every plant the Heavenly Father has not planted in your ministry. Every plant the Heavenly Father has not planted in your family. I approach it in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I pray the key of authority and the key of power and the key of conviction and confidence give unto all your people tonight in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, that these people of God, men and women of God, you'll never be the same anymore. You will do exploits for the Lord. Oh Lord, this is a prayer. Raise up Elijah's here. Raise up Elisha's here. And the power, the fire, the mantle, the authority of Elijah come upon the willing people in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray that you make them now know that they, are, they carry precious things. Make them so careful in their lives that this power will not leak away. This key will not be lost. This confidence will not be forgotten. This conviction, nobody from Babylon will touch it in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, everywhere they go, everywhere they walk, set your mark on them. That when anybody sees them, hears their voice, when they stand and they declare the word of the living God, 
the people that have evil power, immediately they will be arrested. They will tremble before them. That no brother here, no sister here will remain weak anymore, will be afraid anymore of any evil power anywhere in Jesus' name. As so why with Moses before Pharaoh, be with them. As so why with Elijah before Ahab, we with them. Let your everlasting arms sustain them. That Lord, enemies will run away from them. Rather than they running from enemies. Lord, open a new chapter. In the lives and the ministries of everyone here. That after this day, after this week, your ministry will become a new ministry in Jesus' name. And the new chapter that is to be written about your life and ministry and family will swallow up all the other chapters in Jesus' name. Lord, you will not say no. You will not reject. You will not deny them. Lay your hand on them. Confirm them as your servants. And let the miracles that will follow confirm that you have called them. Lord, I pray, anywhere they go representing you, show visibly that they are your representatives. Thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Keep on standing, keep on standing in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We are the victory. We are the victory. Sing like Elijah. the victory in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus we have the victory we have the victory in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus Satan will have to Hallelujah, when I pray in the name of Jesus, tell me who has the power to oppose in the name of mighty Jesus. You are the victory, you are the victory in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. You have the victory, you have the victory in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, when I pray in the name of Jesus, tell me who has the power to oppose. I believe, yes, Lord, I believe, yes, Lord, I believe, it is well with, it is well with you, I believe, yes, Lord, I believe, it is well with you, is it well with you, I believe, yes, Lord, I believe. Yes, it is well with me. I believe. Yes, Lord. I believe. Yes, Lord. I believe. Yes, it is well with me. I believe. Yes, 
We are saying thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. I am saying thank you, Jesus. I am saying thank you, Jesus. Are you saying thank you, Jesus? I'm saying thank you, Jesus. We are saying thank you, Jesus.